Today on The State of Us, the threat of shutdown and a powerless speaker. Kevin McCarthy made a series of promises to conservative Republicans to win the House speakership and keep legislation on track, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now many of them are coming due with a possible government shutdown and potentially his own job on the line. Welcome to the State of Us. I'm your host, Justin T. Weller, joined today by the one and only your friendly redneck liberal and the senior resident historian here at True Chat, Mr. Lance Jackson. You mean Kevin McCarthy's in trouble with his own party? That doesn't sound like something we've ever talked about before. There was no way when he got the job (laughs) and had 100% support and and, and was given the speakership on the first vote. Oh, wait a minute. I think it was the 15th vote. Yeah. And three days of heavy negotiations. And major concessions. And major concessions that, you know, what is it? If one person wants him Mm -hmm. that any member can Any member can say, we want want to revote. Yeah. Huh. What's the issue that's got him in trouble? What's he done? <laughs> what do you you want to take your pick? I mean, well, yeah, give me one. Uh, so, so the situation, right? I mean, just for those. I mean, that, NFL football that started. Been Not everybody's attention. been watching, right? <laughs> I mean, they haven't been. There's watching. There's been bigger things to focus bigger on. Bigger issues. Going and it on. seems like every year the government's going to shut down. So, I mean, it it's can't be that big, big a deal. deal. That's right. right. It's just they what we do. To shut down. <laughs> but, but I what, mean, the automobile workers are on strike. Uh, that's a big deal because I can't buy a new car. That's right. The that's things that big. really matter. Federal budgets don't actually matter. But. I mean, politicians don't get paid. I don't care. That's yeah. So the the deal is right. You've got the beginnings of an impeachment inquiry, okay, in the House. So and the Democrats occupy the Senate, right? So uh, Democrats hold control of the Senate. Republicans hold control of the House, and Democrats hold the White House. So the Republican Congress has initiated. The Republican House of Representatives has initiated an impeachment inquiry into the Democratic president. Okay. And we need to get a spending agreement done, uh, which needs to come, you know, from the House to the Senate and be signed by the president. So that should really be no problem Mm. at all to navigate those headwinds. And if that wasn't enough... Right. You have a a razor thin majority in the House right now. So the speaker can't afford to lose basically any votes because from his the own Republicans party. did not do well in the midterm election. Yeah, I think he can lose. I think I mean, the article tells it's us four, here, isn't it? it's four. I thought it was four. Yeah, I believe it's four votes um, because of the retirement of one of the members. It, it made the you margin. Mean the Democrats thinner. won't vote for him. <laughs> no, no, probably not. Oh, yeah. But, but are they going to put up Hakeem Jeffries from New York? Uh, they could. If they take down McCarthy. They could put you up. I know. Well, we've talked about that, right? I'm not sure the Republicans have put you up, but- But anybody can be <laughs> but speaker anybody of the can House. Be speaker. They could put our producer up, who's not here. <laughs> right. So, but uh, but yeah, anybody can be speaker, technically. So, so wait a minute. Let's go back, though, as we're, we're having some fun here. But if one member of the House yes. calls timeout, they can put- then. The speakership is up for... Can call for a vote of no confidence. Okay. And what happens if Kevin McCarthy gets a vote of no confidence? Then we have to elect a new speaker. He either has to win that vote. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if... if Well, and the whole thing is that the vote of no... It would be successful because you assume, right, that if there was such a vote called, if if you can get just five dissenting Republicans and all the Democrats... He's gone. Do you think the Democrats would? And I'm being serious here, okay? Would the Democrats vote against him? I mean, I don't like I, I, politically. I'm I've never been a Kevin McCarthy fan. But if you're the Democrats, with who you might get, if the Republicans all would go behind a certain person, which they're having trouble doing anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting, right? My whole theory of for the last 10 years on this show between Democrats and Republicans. The Republicans are the ones who always have their crap together, and the Democrats are always just splintering and going off in a thousand different directions. It's kind of both of them now are doing that. I mean, the Republicans don't have control of their party like they normally do. 
from the House of Representatives to Mitch McConnell in the Senate to wanting Donald Trump to represent the Republican Party. Because if you're not reading those articles, there are some very, very wealthy Republicans who are doing everything they can to try to find somebody to represent the Republican Party because they don't want Donald Trump. And they're not doing it on the QT. So, I mean, the Republicans seem to have a real trouble right now keeping their own house in order. So, so would the Democrats say, you know, better the devil I know than who the Republicans might come up with? I mean, it's possible. I, I think what you should do, and this is for later in the show, is to talk about what's the better option, right? I mean, we and we talked about this when the speakership was being decided and there was this whole mess, you know, in the first place of- But yeah, he's trying to get a deal though, right? Yeah. I, I mean- Legitimately, isn't he trying to work? I guess. I mean, with the Democrats. I, I mean, yes, I think he, he is because but that's why he's in trouble. But how do is you? Because he's not playing hardball, right? With the Democrats. Yeah. So McCarthy's actually trying to work with the Democrats and the Democratic president to get a budget passed so that there's not a government shutdown. Well, because playing and hardball why, is not going to get it done. Right. But what the Republicans, well the far right Republicans want him to do is play hardball. And that's why he's in trouble. Correct? Yeah. I mean, the article points out that even by recent Washington standards, McCarthy is in a tough spot. His conservative flank is threatening to continue to block legislation or try to take away his job if he can't improve upon current GOP written spending bills, which are already non-starters with the Democratic Senate. Right. McCarthy can lose no more than four votes and still pass legislation after a Utah Republican's retirement on Friday. For now, Democrats are just watching McCarthy squirm. Head into the weekend, headed into the weekend, some Republican factions are trying to hammer out a path forward that could pair a short-term continuing resolution with measures aimed at improving border security. The talks have been backed by McCarthy and his leadership team, and they were continuing Friday even after many members of Congress had left town. The, the problem is that one of the things that the far right flank is demanding, you know, is they, they want something on border security. And they want no more aid to Ukraine. And in order for, if McCarthy does that, then the Senate's not going to pass it. Right. So, I mean, you've, you're, you're putting in, it's a, it's like a poison pill thing. It, 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 like on Ukraine, it's a hard line. I mean, according to what the article says, it's, they want no more aid for Ukraine. So it's like, are you are you willing to consider less? I, I don't want to side. You know, and I don't want to I, derail the show. But but why are the is the hard right Republican faction against giving money to Ukraine? Well, because we're supporting Putin, <laughs> or we're just saying we don't have enough money. What's yeah, I think it's the it's the it's the classic thing that we've seen in Washington the past you know what ten years where whichever party's in power. The other party is going to claim that we need spending cuts. That's what they're going to do. They're going to accuse the other party of fiscal irresponsibility. So the Republicans love to cry, right, that there's budget problems and that we got to cut spending. They love to say that whenever they're not in power. But when they're in power, we don't have any problem running up the deficit. And and in fairness, I mean, that's what the Democrats do, too. You know, it's, well, right now, you know, we have all this stuff we want to get done, so we're going to get this done. And then once we don't have the majority anymore, we're going to say, isn't it ironic that the Republicans are, you know, spending and they always say that they don't want to and we, you know, can't do this. And so it's the it's the classic ploy of it's when it fits, you know, when it's convenient that's when they want to talk about it. And so they can say, you know, hey, we're spending all this money here. Can we really do that? Let's let's spend it someplace else or just not spend it at all, preferably. <laughs> but it doesn't do the Democrats any good if the government shuts down. No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't do it. It does no one any good for the government to shut down. But the point of today's show is it appears that the right wing of the Republican Party wants that to happen. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't say... It, there are people that want it to happen. It's not beneficial to the everyday American for it to happen. How's that? Is that a better <laughs> a better way to explain it? The far right and the far left 
if they hold their line, and, and this isn't just the budget, folks, right? We've time and again, what they can do. So, like in this case, the very far right saying, you know, they can go back to their constituents and say, we held the line, you know, we're shutting down the government because we said we can't just keep spending this way. So, you know, look what we did for you. That's, we did what we said we do, you know, which is we draw, we draw the line in the sand and we're not yeah, going to let- Yeah, and you're not going to get your social security honest. check. Well, yeah, but you know, that, that's not our fault. You know, we said, here's the line and they, and they crossed it. So, you know, we're, we're stopping them. That's what we're doing. We're stopping them. You know, we drew the line and that's, and again, I'm not harping in this case, it's the far right, but we had this same problem not that long ago when the house was controlled by the Democrats, right? Because it was the same. I mean, the speaker actually had a little more authority then, but we had the same problem then. If everybody remembers, we were in, we were in a very similar conversation about how the far left was holding hostage, you know, the speaker and the middle of the party on a spending deal because they said, you know, we have to have these things in this deal. You know, or we're not voting for it. So to wrap up this first segment, Speaker McCarthy is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. The article uh, says at one point that, you know, this might be this might even be too tough uh, for the master Houdini uh, to get out of. So because it's a you're starting at such diametrically opposed positions and that's the problem with when you draw lines in the sand. You know what I mean? Which, again, how many times have we talked about on the show? When you when you say, we will not entertain X, Y, Z. You know, keep it here on The State of Us. We'll be right back. McCarthy got a little heated with the press and internally this past week, um, showing that maybe he's under a little bit of stress or a lot of stress because of this predicament. Um, I mean, again, maybe he's got something up his sleeve that I don't know, but I don't know how you merge these. I, you cannot from a from a, you know, arbitration standpoint, right? Like if we're just looking at, well, one side starting here and one side starting here, and we need to come to a compromise. And, and this side is saying that we won't compromise. Well, there is no, com- like we can't have a compromise then if, if a side has started out by saying we won't compromise, right? Um, that it, w- there is no compromise. So, so from that standpoint, there isn't a compromise that he can come up with. The only way you're going to get him to move is some kind of political backroom dealing crap, you know, that is going to give them something in the future to get them to step out of the way now or threaten them with something. That's what's going to have to happen. You know, so it's a, I think it's a question of can can McCarthy find something like that to use against them? Because the traditional notion of you're going to give a little, I'm going to give a little and everybody win doesn't seem to be what the far right is willing to entertain this time around. I'm just, I'm just not getting this. It just doesn't. Do they just want, do they just want McCarthy out as the speaker? Are they, are they upset that he sold him down? They sold him down the river at some point. I mean, it looks like they're not giving him any place to go. No, they're not. Or, 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 it, or is McCarthy trying to call their bluff and say, you know what? You don't like the job I've done for the last year. Vote me out. Yeah. You do it. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, actually, he says. Um, I mean, you know, which is it? You know, is it or is it some combination or 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 what's going on here is that we need. Right. And, I, and I'm not getting into the weeds on how much money we should be spending or no money on Ukraine. I mean, I, I agree that the, we've talked ad nauseum about the budget and what sure. should have been done over the last 10 years when we had Democratic presidents and Republican presidents. And yeah. the, do we and need to do, rein in spending and take a serious look at the budget? Of course we do. All you've got to do is look we've at been the archives. that for years. You know? that's, that's not what we're talking about today. But nobody's talking about taking a serious but look at that. But this is, no. And we, you know, when we've talked about what percentage of the federal budget is actually negotiable in the first place, you know? So, I mean, it's, 
You're well, going to trip what, up a lot of people there. But what do you mean? The whole wait, you, they can't negotiate on the whole budget. Well, if they're, if they're regular listeners, they know that it's not you that know, right. They, that we only negotiate on, on some twenty to thirty percent of the budget. Right, <laughs> and yeah. the rest of it's the rest of it's already there has to be put in, like Social Security, like you know all the issues we won't touch. Right. Um, but I don't understand. Then, what are the Republicans trying to gain here? By making this stand, is it is well, it? Well, McCarthy suggested is it budgetary, that, or is it we want to oust? We want a reason to oust McCarthy. M- McCarthy suggested that it might yes. be. Yeah, I was going to say. I think I think McCarthy's answer is kind of yes. One of his adversaries, you know, has he claims has a personal vendetta against him, and and McCarthy told a closed door GOP conference that he wasn't scared of a vote to oust him, and the descendants should quote go ahead and effing do it, according to House lawmakers that were in the room, and he said on Thursday, you know what, if it takes a fight, we'll have a fight. So I, I mean, he's he's getting. I think maybe he's starting to feel the um, consequences of having agreed to such concessions, which, again, we talked about when he accepted those concessions. Um, he made a deal with the devil. Yeah. And now the devil's come knocking. And, and, and in fairness to Kevin McCarthy, I mean, we talked about this when he was up. There wasn't anybody else that was really even very close. So, I mean, the, the alternative, right. Cause everybody could say, well, he shouldn't have accepted those. Okay. Well, he doesn't accept those. Do we have a speaker of the house? You know, do we, do we have, cause there's this whole procedural thing, folks, not to bore everybody, but there's this legitimate issue with, if there is no speaker, there's very little that the house can actually do on an ongoing basis. If there's not a sitting speaker, because for example, things like um, full operational rules for the floor. Those things can't be adopted unless a speaker is sitting. So if there is no sitting speaker, there's all these things that you can't do because the rules, the way the house is structured, don't allow you to do it. To bring up history, this isn't new. The names... You mean we've had fights for speaker before? Well, no, I'm just saying recently. Remember in the re- within the Republican Party, you had John Boehner yep. and Paul Ryan. We had that. Who, who both... Republicans, strong spending cut people who just walked away yep. and said, you know what? I'm not putting up with all this belly aching and, and everything within their own party. Yeah. And, you know, Paul Ryan was a tax guy. I mean, he was, you know, budget was his yep. forte and he-, and he walked away from it. We're entering into an election year. Yeah. I mean, just, so is this right? Is that is that in the background pushing some of this? Is this a ploy by the Trump people hmm. to get Kevin McCarthy out of the speakership as we head to election season starting in January? It sounded a little conspiracy theorist. I'm, well, but it's not that far out of the side. I mean, it's not that far out of the realm of possibility because, again, if you look at the people that are in the far right flank of the the party they're i mean historically they've been very supportive of trump um and i'm not sure that a speaker that's interested in compromising going into an election year is who you want is it who i want yes is it who the american people should want yes i'm not saying that kevin mccarthy's that guy i'm saying that he's shown interest in doing that right and if you're the far right and you're loyal to, for example, President Trump, and your thought is we want to get President Trump back in power, compromise is not helping you in an election year. But do you want to be seen as the party that shut down the government and sent us into a recession? Do they care? I don't know if you want to win the Cause, White House. Because they just do you they want, just, do they you just want blame, that to be? They just blame Right. That this had this is the this is the pain that had to take place because at some point somebody has to step up and make the hard decisions. You know, we got to do the hard work of I mean, I don't agree with that, folks, in terms of that that logic. But if I was employed to spin the narrative for them, that's what I would do is, you know, we did what nobody was willing to do and we called out the problem and we've got the guy that can come in and fix it. Okay, but you go back. 
Newt Gingrich did that to Bill Clinton. And Clinton came out smelling like a rose. And Newt Gingrich lost all of his power. Well, but Lance, nobody cares about history. Oh, okay. Remember, didn't we just do, didn't, did we not just have the show not that long ago on um, civics education and American history education and only 13 some percent of eighth graders scored it proficient or better? So, I mean, why, why, why pff, they, but, uh, half our listeners don't even know the names that you just mentioned. So I mean, why would we expect our lawmakers to have any knowledge of history or that that might be a dumb idea? We assume and have assumed for a long time because they used to go hand in hand that, right, if you have the power, then you're also supposed to be the person leading, which in fairness, totally natural assumption that the people with the power should be the ones that are leading because they have the ability to, you know, lead. But I'm not sure that that's exactly the goal. You know, we've talked about what is the goal? No, because it's hard to lead. What is the goal of a political party? The goal of a political party. I don't know. What is the goal of a political party? Is to get elected. That's that's it. You know what I mean? That that is That is the entire... Reason and existence of a party is to elect people of that party. Now, do you really believe that? I mean, that's what I think the parties isn't the it to party get their cares agenda about. And, and what they think is I the best I, direction for the American public. Look at the Republican and I mean, the Democratic agenda from the past you, twenty years. How many of those positions have have they not? altered 10 different times now to try to, you know, well, yeah, we, you know, like the, the Republicans having shifted almost completely away from, I mean, I was just in a meeting, you know, so we're electing politicians just this week with heart, with quote unquote died in the wool red Republicans who could have given two hoots or a holler about small government. They don't care about small government because the party doesn't care about small government anymore. You know, so eh, it's not really that important. I mean, they'll give it a little lip service, you know, but basically what they were telling me the whole time is, well, unless this government institution and this government institution and this government institution all think this is a good idea, then we can't do it. And and I was just sitting there the whole time like, aren't you all Republicans? Like, what, what, what am I missing here about who you people are, because I thought that you were supposed to be the party that would have been all for get those agencies out of the way and and help get money to private entities to let them do the fixing, you know, and it was the total opposite of that. And I think I mean, that's anecdotal, but I think that it is it is a larger shift in what we've talked about, which is the trend of the Republican Party and the trend of the Republican Party to move away from um some of their more typical things that we came to know over the past 40 years, and they're moving more toward populism. And on the Democratic side, we've seen them in some ways move away from populism and more to elitism. And and those dynamics of the parties are very, are very counter to what they stood for, quote unquote, even just 10 or 15 years ago. That's true. I think So when you ask me their agenda, well, which one? You know, which... Which agenda? Because their agenda doesn't look anything like it did 15 years ago or even or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Their agenda has changed and their agenda, I think they've both shifted their agenda to do what they think will get them elected instead of just win, baby. Just win. Keep it here on The State of Us and we'll be right back. Kevin McCarthy. Speaker McCarthy seems to be in a bit of a pickle, and that pretty much describes where he's been since before he took the job. <laughs> and while it's easy to blame McCarthy for some of this, I think we also have to pull back to where we were when we were talking about whether or not McCarthy was going to be speaker. We did this show, and we talked about why are we in this position? Because you mentioned Lance in the second segment, and I think this is worth noting that the Republicans have had this problem the last three times that they've had a speaker. They've had speakers more frequently than the Democrats have. But I also want to point out that the last time that the Democrats had a speaker, they had this problem, right? I mean, we talked about that even a little bit before, but- Well, for her last two years. Right. She didn't have, I mean, she ruled with an iron fist yeah. 
for a long, her, for a long, well, what seemed like yeah, her in today's most, politics a long yeah, time. For, but her last term was a little For Nancy bit, Pelosi's most recent and, right. interestingly, final right. term, there was, I mean, now she had a much easier time getting elected than McCarthy did. But it wasn't easy. I mean, I don't know if anybody remembers no, that. No, it was the first time since she had been gotten the speakership that there was some pushback from within the Democratic Party. Right. So this has been seeding, you know, for a while, this issue surrounding the Speaker of the House and how they're going to get chosen. So the question became, when we looked at this last time, is there something wrong with the system? Or is there something wrong with the people? And we've already answered that there's something wrong with the people. Okay, but we are we can't just- Can we fix the system? Can we also do something to the system that prevents the people from abusing it the way that it is or, or continuing to take advantage of it the way that it is? The answer is yes. Um, so No Labels, who we had on to do a show, you know, we've had on lots of times, but had on recently to talk about their- work for an independent or a or third party ticket um, potentially for the next presidential election. Back when McCarthy was seeking the speakership, they put out a policy book um, called The Speaker Project. And it was exactly highlighting basically, isn't this a freaking mess? And is this really who the speaker, is this really how we should be doing the Speaker of the House? There are two rules in particular that they highlight that make it fairly easy for ideological factions to threaten a speaker who doesn't do their bidding, which is part of what you get in this issue. So the the first thing is vacating the motion to vacate, right? That's the that's the solution here. So the motion to vacate the chair, which is what we talked about before, is a rule that allows any House member to demand a no confidence vote of the speaker by the full House. So the proposal instead would be that the next Congress should significantly revise the motion to vacate rule. The motion should be allowed only when a party's full caucus votes to file it or when serious ethical allegations have been lodged against the speaker. But right now, remember the way that it is, what what McCarthy agreed to is one, one member of his party has to just stand up and, and say, I want to vote on McCarthy's job. Yeah. They can they can move for a motion to vacate not 10%, the chair. Not 10%, not 50%. Nope. One. One. One, one person, can call that vote. Right. One person you know? can have a fight with their significant other and get mad and just say, oh, I'll just vote on McCarthy. Yep. The second one, and this is the one that I think is big and is like an absolute, is a bipartisan speaker. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You only have one speaker. Right. So how do you get a bipartisan one? Ah, well, the House. I mean, we talk about bipartisan ticket. How is the speaker elected? By means two. How is the elector, how is the elector, how is the elector, how is the speaker elected? Does any, do, do our listeners really know? Well, by the House of Representatives. By, but by the entire House. Right. 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 I mean, theoretically. Yes. Because they are the I mean, they all speaker of the House. I mean, when Kevin McCarthy ran, the Democrats put up Hakeem Jeffries. That's why I put that name out there. What The way it's been operating for most of my life, right, and probably most of yours, is that whichever party's in the majority basically chooses the speaker, and the other party all votes no, and that's it. You right. know? Because if you have the majority, the only thing required to elect the speaker currently is a simple majority, right? So because of that, what it allows is whichever party is in power, generally the way they look at it is, well, we're electing the speaker and we don't care what the other side, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, they'll put up somebody to run because it's a ceremonial thing, but like not, they don't expect them to actually, you know, win. So the proposal from No Labels was that Congress should change the rules for electing a speaker. The new minimum number of votes required should equal the majority party's total membership plus five. So- in other words, instead of simple majority, if the you know Republicans hypothetically you know had twenty over the majority, then you would need twenty five over the majority in order to get it, ensuring that it's impossible. Why five? I mean, the the, the notion is that uh, the, so well. Let me tell you. 
So, for example, if the majority party has 225 members, a speaker nominee would have to receive at least 230 votes. Theoretically, this could require a speaker to win support from only five opposition party members. But in recent years, several House Republicans and Democrats have refused to back their party's nominee. So it's quite possible, even likely, that a would-be speaker would have to win the backing of numerous minority party members. If a would-be speaker has to receive even a few opposition party member votes, it will weaken the leverage of the ideological fringes. Whenever a hardcore member says, I won't vote for you because you're too accommodating, it forces the speaker nominee to find yet another vote from the opposition party. People will soon learn that this new rule works for bipartisanship and against extremism. Mm. Nice theory. I'm not... Well, the fear would be I mean, that I'm, I'm, you I'm just all don't for, get any speaker. Right. I mean, all, I'm all <laughs> for, never a speaker. for trying something different, right? I'm not going to yeah. poo-poo this. That it's almost a little pie in the sky that that would actually work. Because, well, I guess it's like that side said, of if you make it the rule, right? It's either how long the job of our members of the House, right, are- Is to elect a speaker. That's their first order of business that, that's, because that's the only as order you pointed of business. Out, they can't do anything until they get the speaker. So I mean, so they, so what? I guess the other side of that is: is it our problem? Do you just keep is going it, down is it Lance the list? And Justin's problem? Until, well, it is until you get somebody that they're okay with. No, it is because then the country doesn't operate, and we're all going to be affected by it. And that's what I don't think people understand. That's what I was saying in the beginning of the show. This sounds like, ooh, let's sit back and watch and see what's going to happen Yeah, because this is going to be interesting, right? Like a heavyweight championship fight or something. But what happens if there's no speaker indefinitely is that the House of Representatives can't operate. And that's not good. Which means, right, not only is there no budget, but forget any law being passed. How many times might you go throw a name up there? Before you got it. And the whole time that's happening, what's now become the center of attention is electing a Speaker of the House, not operating the government for the good of the people. That well, I'm just arguing the other side sure. there. And that's my concern. Another proposal I mean, it's better was, than what we have now. So maybe we try it. But it, I'm not sure it's a whole lot better. The idea of having to secure the support of the minority, you know. It's good in theory. It's good in theory. But I'm not sure about the reality of it. The, the other thing that's pointed out is that there is no rule, and we, we mentioned this, right? There is no rule that requires the Speaker of the House to actually be a member of the House of Representatives. I understand. And another theory has been that maybe the best way to, you know, remove some of the problems around the Speaker is to quit electing a member of the House of Representatives as the Speaker, Elect somebody who isn't a member of the House. But who has to, to put sit. them up? Each party has to put up a person, correct? Well, I think the rules, I would have to check around nominating. You know, there's there's certain requirements. But yeah, I mean, you know, a, a certain group with enough people, anybody can nominate a candidate. And then as you go through the balloting, it can be whittled well, down. Well, you know, I mean, I'm retired. But that's what I mean. Right. Is, I, mean, I could put my name in the hat if I get. There's something to be said, too, for looking into why don't we put somebody in the job who isn't a currently elected politician who maybe has a track record of. Because I wouldn't care what either one of them said. I just run. I, I just rule with an iron fist, baby. They do my way or the highway. Well, your job is to lead the house. Right. Right. But the problem is, I, I think in some ways that's maybe even more pie in the sky than no labels idea, because how the heck are you ever going to get, you know, anybody put in that position that isn't just a political hack? Because, I'll impeach them all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what she'll do. <laughs> That'll we'll have fix a whole it. new election. <laughs> get the whole house to vote if on Speaker impeaching Jackson themselves. Speaker Jackson doesn't like who you elected, I'm just throwing it back at your state. and You got to elect a whole new slate of representatives. We need to try something because the the business about the way the speaker is right now is obviously not good. Um, I mean, I don't I don't care if you like McCarthy or not. He's in a tough spot, right? You know, this is a this is well, an my awful concern, position to be in. Yeah, my concern is not for McCarthy; it's for the good of the country, right? And because well, when you of have McCarthy's a speaker position, that can't, when he can't, when a, when a speaker can't lead, 
it's not good for the United States. I mean, there were several times, again, roll, roll back the archives here and take a look, but there were several times that Lance and I are both on record as having supported something that, um, you know, Ryan or Boehner wanted to do and they could not do because they were being held hostage. The eliminating the motion to vacate idea or making it very, very hard to do, you know, um, that also helps because it's that notion of that. It's not like we do that with president, you know, or any member of the house. I mean, if you and I don't like the job that Jim Jordan is doing during his term, we can't just stand up and say, oh, well, let's have a vote and vote him out. You know, we can't do that. It's the whole notion of, you know, the reason they get a term is is in part, hopefully, so that they don't have to succumb to political pressures all the time. Um, so, I mean, there, there's another idea is you could, you know, set a definitive term for speaker. And unless you've got two thirds or more of the house, you know, you're not getting them out of there. And you could also, you know, term limit the speaker to say that they can only ever serve one term, you know? So that way there is no, you, you never have to worry about being speaker again, because you're only ever going to do it one time and you get your one term, you know, and that's what you get. So you make it. The only way to get you out of there is with a super majority of the House. And the rest of the time, your job is to lead the House. So you want to make a deal with the Republicans. You want to make a deal with the Democrats. You can do that, you know, because the extremes, the only that's the thing that we have to say about this. Right. The way the system is right now for speaker, the only beneficiary of this is the extreme right and the extreme left, because what it sounds like to me is that Jim Jordan and a few of his cronies are running Congress. And I i don't know, but last time I checked, nobody across the nation voted for Jim Jordan to decide what Congress was going to do. Neither did Congress, by the way. Right. They didn't vote for that either. <laughs> they voted for McCarthy to well, do that. Well, and the that. same thing could be said for AOC on the other side. Well, that's what I mean. I, yeah, I'm not picking on just Jim Jordan. I'm just using him as an example because he's one of the people in that faction that historically does that. But yeah, you could say the same thing about it. Well, it's just what she did with, she tried to do. She doesn't have quite the power that Jim Jordan has, but that's what she wanted to do with Nancy Pelosi. Why we do this show today, Lance? True Chat has a mission, and that mission is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. And I believe we've done that today, and hopefully you've learned something. I know I've learned some things. Share it with your family and friends if they'd like to listen. Tell them they can find us as a podcast on Spotify, Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcast, and everywhere podcasts are found. State of Us releases new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, first thing in the morning. As a podcast, those same episodes are heard on the weekends on AM and FM radio stations across the United States and parts of Canada. For The State of Us, I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Lance Jackson. Special thanks to our associate producer, Levi LaForge, to our in-studio guest, Carmine Lance, and of course, to our senior producer, Bradley Butch. Thank you all, our audience, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be the change. Be sure to check out our website, thestateofus.org, for books, articles, and all the ways to tune in. Thestateofus.org.